Game 7 versus Boston. Still 2012. Conference Finals. LeBron makes a late three. Long range. Big time shot. Chris Bosh makes three straight three pointers in a row to help Miami Heat prevail versus Boston. You get to the NBA Finals. Again, 2012. You face a young superstar in Kevin Durant. A young star in Russell Westbrook. And a young six-man rising star in James Harden. Okay, C team. You beat them in five games. You win your first NBA championship. You finally got over the hump. You win your first finals MVP, averaging 27, 10, and 7 with D. Wade and Chris Bosch in the crew. Next year, you get back to the NBA Finals. Who do you face? The San Antonio Spurs. Game one, Tony Parker hits an incredible shot to win. Game two, you block a, a great block on splitter. Now fast forward to game six. It was looking bad. LeBron, you look you look like he was choking again until the fourth quarter came and you dropped 18 without having that headband. You decided not to wear a headband after that game. Until the last three minutes of the game, you turn the ball over twice. And then you hit a late three. And then you try to, and then you shot another three. And you miss it. And Chris Bosch grabbed the rebound and passed it into the quarter when Ray Allen made the most incredible clutch three pointer in NBA Finals history. Save your legacy once again. And then you drop basically 40 points in game seven and a prevail win and get your second green back to back versus the San Antonio Spurs. Finals MVP, all deal. Haters still talking talk about you're not even top 10 all time. Fast forward to 2016. The year before, 2015, your players were hurt. Kyrie and Kevin Love was hurt. Game one. You still managed to drop 40 in every game that series. With with who your teammates at the time? Matthew Delvadova. Timmy Timothy Mosgoff. Who else? You lost in six. Go to say gets your first ring. Curry gets his first ring. 2016, you get your players back. And you face a 73-9 Golden State Warriors team, arguably the, the best regular season team in NBA history. What happens? You be you get down 3-1. Everybody saying, Golden State got this. You come out, game five. You and Kyrie each have 40. Force the game six. LeBron, what you do in game six? Uh, just some some random. 40 points again. Blocking Curry's shot. Having Curry ejected from the game. Game seven. Crunch time. Four minutes left in the game. Eagle Dollar driving to the rack. And you make the the biggest block in NBA history. The cl most clutch block in NBA history. The greatest block in NBA history. Next possession. What do you do? You let Kyrie have the ball. Kyrie pulls up on Curry one, and makes the shot. One of the greatest shots in NBA House Finals history once again. And you prevail. You come that back down 3-1. You come back to Cleveland and get Cleveland a ring. Get them a championship. Probably your greatest accomplishment of your career. Now we get to 2020. And you still going with Kobe passing, with the pandemic, with the injustice. Lakers and Clippers saying y'all don't want to play. You're in the West now. Everybody saying you're using the 
he was in a weak Eastern Conference. Now you're in the West, a tough Western Conference. First round, you face Portland and Dame Dollar pulling out from 40 in game one. You lose. People count y'all out. What do you do? Next game, gentlemen sweep. 4 1. Next series, Houston. Russell Westbrook and James Harden crew. Great offensive squad. James Harden looking to not to actually be clutching the playoffs. Russell Westbrook and James Harden win game one. James Harden comes out and drops 40 on him. And Russell Westbrook tops LeBron. Every other game, gentlemen sweep. Conference finals. It was supposed to be the Clippers, right? What happened? Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, they choked the 3-1 lead to Denver Nuggets. So you face Denver. Tough Denver squad. Jokic's one of the best big men in the league. Murray, a rising superstar. Def, MPJ, rising superstar. What happens? Gentlemen sweep. You drop 40, triple-double in game five. Now we get to Miami. A great young Miami squad. Jimmy Butler in the crew. Two, first two games, y'all tear them apart. Game three, you come out. Jimmy Butler comes out and just dominates. 2 1. AD does his thing. 3 1. Game five, Danny Green chokes. So game six, you come out and you have this team. Just dominate defensively. Jimmy Butler couldn't get any kind of shots off. They just looked out of sync. They looked tired. You have playoff Rondo. You have AD. You have Kawa Pope playing well. And you still get finals MVP, LeBron. We're having top three player on your team playing out of his mind. In his first finals appearance, you still managed to average a triple-double in the finals. And you get your fourth finals MVP. Fourth championship ring. Three different franchises. I repeat, three different franchises. Miami, twice. Cleveland, once. And now the Lakers. With everything going on, Kobe and Gigi passing, injustice, pandemic, and you still manage to pull it off. I just have one question. What would a hater say now? What can the hater say now? LeBron, I got, I've got to witness you your whole career. I have to say you're 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 the GOAT. I have to say it. I have not got to witness MJ in his prime. I got to witness his highlights. I got to witness film. But I'm not comparing no more. I'm not comparing MJ. I'm not comparing Kobe. I'm not comparing LeBron. They're all sitting at the dinner table. Ladies and gentlemen, let's stop comparing and just appreciate greatness before it's all gone. I hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. Congratulations to the Los Angeles Lakers. Congratulations to LeBron James. Congratulations to AD. And congratulations to the Lakers organization. He he did it for Kobe. That's all I got, man. I appreciate you tuning in for this video. It's been your boy, Will, and I'm out.